Hi, I'm Bert from Equip2. Um, today we're going to talk about the science of the keystrack impact crushes. Um, we get a lot of questions why the keystrack is shaped the way it is, but the reason we get very, very good results being tonnage, um, shape of material, and low wear, and also low fuel costs. So the reason for this is keystrack designed the rotor more as a square rotor rather than a lot of the traditional ones are a round rotor. So as you see, you probably can't quite see where you are now, but the blow bars are actually stepped back from the center of the shaft. Um, a lot of round rotors are right directly in a cross section. So just going into the specifics of this, you can see we've got a nice flat area that is in front of the blow bar. And a blow bar is stepped back, so when the material is entering into the chamber, the direction of the material is actually aiming directly for the shaft of the rotor. And that allows the material to get in front, so we've got a stone sitting here in front of the blow bar, and that's getting a strike on the face of the blow bar. And then it's sending up on the direction straight into the first impact panel, and then that'll ricochet off that, and then into the secondary impact panel going for sizing. So the reason we get less wear is because you're getting the strike of the stone on the face of the bar. With the other type, the stone is striking on the top corner, causing more of a grinding effect and not impact. Because we're getting the stone striking on the front, it also means that we're getting a better fracture to the rock um, and a better cubicle shaped material. And as it comes back from the first apron, the stone's coming back and you get the what we call autogenous crushing and that helps the shape as well. So 80% of the rock is crushed from the striking of the blow bar. And then we talked about the tonnage tons per hour. So this is a small key strike, the smallest impact, but this weighs 3.2 ton. So we've got excellent inertia. So the, the more weight we've got going around at the same RPM as any other rotor, you get better crushing because you've got that weight behind it. And the reason we're getting the tonnage is sending the material with the round rotors, it sends the material more upwards and holds it up in the upper chamber for too long. Whereas this here is achieving the broken face and the tonnage by keeping it moving around. So it means the rotor is getting a lot better flow, which minimizes your, your power source having to keep that inertia up. So with those three things, the stepped rotor being square, um, and having more area in front of it, better weight means less work for the engine, lowering our, our fuel burn. The other thing which we run a lot is, you can see here we've got a two bar, two full bars and two blanks. This also allows the material, as this rotor is spinning, to get closer to hitting the face of the bar, but whilst not reflecting on wearing the rotor. So as you can see, as we turn it around a bit more, um, there's always a, people are afraid of wearing the rotor out. As this blow bar wears, it wears on a curve like this here. Um, we can get about 70% utilisation out of blow bars compared to the other types are more like 50%. And we can take them down to about 10 to 15 mil at the back here and still don't get any wear on the back of our rotor. So thanks for listening. Hope that was beneficial. If there's anything else you'd like to know, please don't hesitate to contact the team here at Equip2.